Did you ever imagine a world where uh, generating PDF on a web server would be as easy as making your own coffee? I did a couple of times. And uh, I asked a few members, a few team on my company, and uh, it takes an average at least one day to find the correct tools and to set up everything and to install and to deploy to production. Um, and this doesn't include the time spending to write the content and styling your PDF. Having said that, my relationship with PDF hasn't been always so bad. When I was 10, uh, I sent my first birthday um, party card by email. And I should admit I was really happy to do it. I really enjoyed to do it. Um, and, um, but then when I started uni, uh, things get more complicated. Uh, because I studied math and computer science, so most of the time my relationship with PDF was more writing reports and uh, documentation. Uh, and a few months ago, it got worse. Uh, we, I have been asked to generate a personalized quote. Um, so it means that if somebody wants to buy a car and to have a quote, uh, to, to buy a car and to have a loan for it, I should um, generate a PDF for it. So uh, let's take an example. If Adan Abramov wants to buy like a Land Rover, um, so I will receive his name and his uh, car details, and I should display this beautiful PDF for him. Uh, maybe at this point, you should you uh, might ask yourself why generating PDF is something complicated. Uh, maybe we can have some look into how it works internally. Um, so first, um, you will, so the tools will um, pass the CSS and the HTML file, and then it will create like an internal structure uh, to, to be able to know what is the content. Then, um, then we will start to create the PDF file, empty file. Uh, then we will create some metadata, like the title, the author. Uh, at this point, we can also fetch data. So we can fetch all the assets, like the image, uh, and the font, or the emojis. Um, and at this point, so we know we have all the data for the image, so we can scale uh, the image we want with the style. Uh, we can also, with the fonts and uh, the text, adjust, adjust uh, the text size. And because we know all for each element what will be the place uh, it will take on the, web, on the file, we can wrap everything into elements, elements into pages. And so at this point, we know uh, what will be the size of each element, what will be the content, so we can render everything and have this beautiful PDF. Um, to summarize, if we say that uh, Mickey Bandmaster is a PDF generator, uh, he will need to um, communicate with a lot of objects like HTML files, CSS files, fonts, images, and PDF. Um, and for this, he needs a lot of tools. So he needs, for example, a parser to parse the HTML, he needs also a font manager to load the font and to display it. He needs a reader for each image format she wants to, to be able to handle. And then finally, he needs a writer to write into the PDF the content you need. So generating PDF is not something really complicated because there is a lot of tools doing it for us. What is complicated is that we need to set up all the tools uh, all the system dependencies. So that's the main issue with generating PDF, is more about installing, setting, and deploying everything to prod. So if I take one example, it happened to me one month ago. So I was able to generate my PDF on my machine. I was really happy to do it. Um, but when I deployed to the validation of the argument, the image weren't displayed at all. And because there was a library missing, 
my image was PNG, and there was no Pine PNG uh, library available in my environment. So I just convert all my images into JPEG, and uh, it was fine. So it wasn't a big issue, but you don't want to have this kind of uh, issue uh, which happened uh, in production, for example. Another issue which happened to me was that um, a designer team uh, creates a design for us, then uh, a computer creates like HTML file and CSS file based according to the template style they made, and we receive those files. But those files were auto-generated HTML and CSS files. So they were kind of ugly. Um, and also they were using all CSS properties. So for example, here we have a center div, which was used, so which is not handled anymore, and which was, wasn't uh, handled uh, by uh, our PDF tools. Um, besides, we have like style into uh, the tags properties, instead of adding them in the style uh, CSS sheets. Um, we had also like margin and padding properties, so our tools didn't manage to do it because we need to precise um, the, the, uh, the position of the margin. For example, we need to precise margin bottom or margin top for each of those properties. So we should, we couldn't, we use the CSS file and HTML file we received as it was. So we need to rewrite uh, all the content of our, um, our file. So, which, so we have two, we encountered two main issues. The one, first one was installing, finding the correct tools and, um, and um, deploying it to production. And the second one was styling our PDF and writing the content. So um, I knew that at this point, if I could find a solution to solve those two issues, I would save a lot of time to a few team in my company, and I hope maybe more than in my company. Uh, that's where uh, I took a look into the, uh, the state of the art, and I, I found the React PDF. That's what I will present to you today. Uh, so React PDF is a React uh, library which allows you to generate PDF uh, when uh, using a React component. Um, so maybe instead of talking about it, I will uh, show you uh, some code. Um, so here you can see you have a still sheets for your style. Here you can see your documents. There is a page, a view, text. And at the end you have, so here you have your document basically. You have the style. In the, in the top, and then here you render this uh, document uh, into a file. Mm, maybe we can, I can show you a quick example. So if I run a YARN PDF, here I will um, use Babel to get a JS file, and then I will run a node to execute this file. So here at this point I should have a file PDF. And here we go we have the beautiful PDF I wanted to have. And if we change something here, for example, I want also to buy the same car as Dan Abramov. Um, and I rerun the ARM PDF. And here is my personal quote now. Okay. Um, so if we continue, so first, the installation, because it was one of the most painful uh, tasks we had. Here, it's using uh, Node Packager, so you just need to run npm install, and all the dependencies are in the package JSON, so it's fine in local, and when you will deploy to production, there will be no problem, so it's really a piece of cake. And uh, if we look into the content, so React PDF is providing like a bunch of uh, components. So it's, the API is really close to the React Native API. So with view, text, image, uh, components. So the main uh, advantage of this is that uh, you can reuse everything you already know uh, from React 
to uh, create your, the content of your PDF. So for example, you can use the props, you can use the state, you can import all of the library you want because it's JavaScript. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's really a, a win of time. Um, but the main drawback is that um, everything should be one of those components. You can't use HTML tags, so which means that in our case, we couldn't reuse uh, anyway the file we received from the design team. Um, but the main part is that at least we could, uh, we could go faster than before because we can reuse what we already know. And uh, speaking of which, for the style is exactly the same case. So um, there is style sheet, like in React Native. And if you are more used to use style components, you can also use it. Um, also, you can use uh, Flexbox, which is really modern CSS properties, which you can't use with uh, uh, most of the, generate, the PDF generator. Um, and also, you have a front loader, which works uh, in local and also in, uh, we can also fetch uh, font from URL. Um, and also, so what you can do is, uh, from the same document, you can render it in different places. So you can render it into the web. Uh, you can make a preview, you can download it. You can also do it in the server. And it should be done uh, soon for the mobile at some point. I mean. um, so, but here we are more focusing about the server part in uh, our use case. And um, so for now, what we could do is we just, we just uh, um, created a PDF uh, in local in our server, but our use case was more to serve this server, so we need to create uh, a server to serve this file. So if I want to be able to make a get request and to get my code templating like this, so either in the, as a query parameter or in the body. Um, and so here is the first step to do. The second one we, we made to improve this kind of tool is to uh, pass directly the query parameter as props. So we generalize, so one of my colleagues uh, generalize this kind of uh, stuff, so here we just, we will be able to use the HTTP uh, query to, uh, to use the props for her because, uh, yeah, it will be, so here if we send the name, it will be directly uh, passed as uh, props for the, in our document. So at this point, we didn't want to do it for each project we start. So uh, we created like a library to do it and we package everything in Docker. So we package the backup bubble configuration and we also uh, created the server and with the upgrades, the improvements, uh, passing the props. And before, so it took us, if you remember good, at least one day to put uh, the PDF into production. And two weeks ago, we did it on one of uh, our projects and took just one hour to do it. So it was really, uh, good improvement uh, for this part. Um, so the library is called uh, HTTP PDF. Uh, here is a link and a small uh, a screenshot of the, H, the, the GitHub page. And maybe I can show you like a small demonstration about it. So in the app, So here in the app.js, uh, you have the server I talked to you, but you don't need really to know what's inside because you won't write anything inside. And in the example, so you have a document folder, and um, for example, if we take the demo, here you have the component, it's the document component, so it's basically your PDF. So there is a style with a style sheet, and there is a props that we will receive from the query. So that's all the job you need to do when you start a new project uh, with HTTP PDF. 
And um, yes, that's all you need to know and all you need to write. So here, if I run my Docker, so here I will run a node server in uh, the 8,000 ports. And if I do, yes. So here, if we, so for example, my file was demo, so I just make a request to demo. Then I pass as the query parameter the name, the car model, the car make, and here I should receive, not my PDF. <laughs> No, it's because it's with me. Oh yes, no way. Okay, so here I received the PDF, which was uh, the PDF I wanted to to receive with other information as sent through the query parameter. And if I change the query parameters with, for example, me again because I really want this car. Um, Oh, because it's still HTTPS. Okay, and here I got the updated uh, file. So, um, to conclude, this um, library we created um, let us uh, set up a new project with. Uh, with a PDF generator in less than one hour. So we solved our problem to install all the dependencies. Um, and we have no problem in production anymore. And, but, and for the styling part, so we solved kind of the issue because we are going faster to develop our uh, styling um, because we are using style sheets, which is more common for us than CSS. Um, but we can't use the HTML and the CSS file we received from the design team. So we didn't solve the problem uh, in, so maybe one of the solution would be to have, uh, to have a generator, uh, a, ge a generator, a more updated generator, which will use uh, like a more uh, a modern CSS and uh, HTML uh, attributes. Um, if you have any questions. <laughs>